Right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming by. I'm glad you're here. We're on another uh, watercolor adventure today. We're going to actually um, get into some sketchbook uh, ideas, uh, painting uh, from our sketchbooks. Um, sometimes we'll have a lot of great ideas that are in our sketchbooks and we forget about them. And then I just recently was going through some sketchbooks I had and I found some from back in 2016 on vacation, a summer vacation with my family. And uh, I had a nice, really interesting looking um small composition here of like uh, a uh, like a table i was having coffee in the morning so i decided you know while having coffee i was going to do a little sketch and i broke out some paints in my sketchbook and my water container and i, I just got into it and you know i drew the chair uh, and the uh, railings here and there's some gorgeous beautiful uh pine trees and some green bushes behind the deck on the outside of the deck area with some beautiful red and orange flowers so I thought, let's maybe try to create more of a finished painting from this small composition that I did in my sketchbook. And, uh, you know, the sketchbook was, um, again, from probably a couple years ago or so, 2016. And I had a few other things in here, too. So we can create other, you know, things from our sketchbooks. So I, I encourage everybody to keep your sketchbooks, you know, bring them with you on vacation. If you're out visiting or maybe just if you have extra time, you can go out and just do a quick few little compositions. This is another one here I did on the same vacation in 2016, a, an interesting uh, ocean scene with a person in a chair enjoying the beautiful surf and there's people in the water there having fun. And uh, this was a house right along uh, where we were staying in our uh, rental. And this was the uh, main avenue that we were staying along the beach. And uh, this was like some really large, beautiful homes here. And uh, so um, these are really fun things you can create, you know, more finished uh, works, you know, larger, um, you know, any of these can really, this one would be fine doing like a large full size painting. And this one, maybe also, maybe to add a little more information into it to make it more interesting. So we can do that too in our sketchbooks. We add some information or delete some information sometimes. And, but we're going to use this one for now. Let's get into it. I'm going to show you my thought process on how I'll take this and sort of develop it a little more, make it into something uh, like we could, you know, frame and make a finished painting of it. Let's try it. Uh, so we'll, I'll set this across from me. And okay, this is Okay, this is what I sketched out by looking at that uh, sketchbook composition I had done. And I sort of added on to it. So I went with this idea, which was the original sketchbook idea, this section. And then I just went further and added out a pretend table. Um, in actual reality, this was where I was sitting was on the second floor. So there wasn't any... Uh, here I created and, you know, sort of imagined that this was on the first floor, maybe along the beach. So I made like an area where there's two uh, posts here where the deck is. So a deck post here, a deck post here. And like that would be the stairs behind this table. We don't see the staircase but and the steps, but that would be behind this table. So this is the table. So I just added that. Added this post, maybe a little bit of green. Uh, some Maybe some more pine trees over here with some flowers. And then I added in the ocean, so we're going to add in an ocean here and a, and a beach area with sand. Maybe a few people sitting and enjoying the, the, day, the day on the beach here with, a, you know, maybe a few people here, a few people in the water. And then other than that, this can really be a really nice, you know, uh, full-size painting. And the way I developed this was I originally, when I started drawing it, 
I started out with the you know idea of it's going to be a landscape painting, so it's going to be on a landscape layout like that versus a uh, vertical layout. And then I said, well, probably half to three quarters of the painting will be my composition that I'm going to want to use. So I started developing that idea and I, you know, lightly sketched it in as I was going. And I found that I had to add on a little extra. So you can, as you're sketching ideas out, you can add on to your your borders and, and make them further out if you need to, to, to fill in more information. I found that when I started drawing, I ran out of room over here. Does that make sense? So then I just went along and took my eraser and just erased the first uh, line I had drawn in. And this is the advantage when we're working on some sketch paper like this, some printer paper, is you can develop ideas and you can erase if you want and it's not a big deal. I wouldn't erase on watercolor paper too much. It kind of disturbs the um, paper. So it's better to avoid um, doing a lot of erasing on watercolor paper. So I just made my border a little larger so I could fit in a little more of the chair like that. And then over here, I think I did the same thing. Uh, this border was okay, so I didn't really, I, this stayed the same, and then I just was trying to figure out where the other post was going to be, so I pushed out that post over to the right here. And there'll be some darker green around this post, like that. And this is the table, and I just was careful to notice my, uh, my lines. This is important. This is more simple, because we have from the original, there's really no, there's not much angles on this portion here where this um, deck is here, this portion of the deck where the spindles are and the railing. There's not much angle to that. It's pretty much straight. It is on a little bit of an angle going upwards and that's what I was seeing when I was drawing and painting it when I was doing my sketch. But in this painting we can kind of leave it more just parallel. I thought that would be good. Makes it easier to draw. And I went with the, the same number of spindles. I tried to keep it similar. I drew it a little slower, but... And this is just a sketch. We're going to do it over again on our watercolor paper. And then I just noticed that my table in my drawing had some lines on it. So now I just consider this... I want to make it look realistic. I want, I'll, so I took my lines on my table and I just said this will be my center point here. So I'll make this point, uh, this point, this post here, that's my center point. I'm going to pretend that's where I'm going to divide my picture with my lines that are uh, par uh, going vertical. So this vertical line is going to be pretty much vertical here. And this one goes, and they fan out this way. And the same here. So I just start taking my lines and working them out in a star pattern. And you can you can always um, you know this is pretty much if if we just use a little bit of angle on our lines like this, just slowly fanning them out a little by little. That's a good effect. That's going to be pleasing. It's not going to look you know like there's any issues. If we were to start making lines and then going out like this, that's going to be a problem. So we just slowly fan out these lines a little bit at a time. And that pretty much looks very believable, the angles. And that's really, you know, other than that, I, I drew in my, where the ocean is, the horizon line of the ocean. Like that. And then here's the sand. And there's going to be uh, uh, some beautiful plants over here and those orangey flowers and red flowers and pine needles and things. So this is going to be the fun part. And this will be a very loose part of the painting. We're not going to get into all kinds of, uh, you know, incredible details here. We're going to use, again, we're going to use our, I'm going to use this as my, um, this, is a, this is quite a bit loose here. And I think I even folded over my paper on my sketchbook 
too soon and you can see it's smudged here and there so that's something I usually have to worry about when I'm out doing sketchbooks is to let it dry a little bit more but in any case this is more of a loose fun painting we're gonna get some good colors here some beautiful vibrant colors um, we're gonna use this as our example starting out the painting and by the time we in our finished painting once we start getting once we get the drawing done and we start putting our colors on and we use this as our guide to start with by the time we have most of this in our painting the rest of the painting is going to go smoothly because we'll have all our colors figured out and we'll be able just to finish the rest of the painting there's some more green um, you know uh, trees and bushes over here and some flowers and things does that make sense if we start the same place in our larger composition our larger painting we start there with this section we already have all our colors here we can look and we know what colors we use pretty much and the shadowing so once we do all that and we start working on this section over here on the right the rest of the painting will go easier so let's do that and we'll take a little break now so once we get our sketch done and we work out our ideas on our sketch then we're ready we can use this across from us and then we'll do our final drawing on our watercolor paper uh, paper and we'll get started we'll do the painting all right everyone so we'll take a quick little break five ten minutes and then we'll come back and we'll start working on our finished drawing on our watercolor paper okay so now we're going to start our uh, drawing on our watercolor paper so we can get prepped for painting Again, we did our steps. We'll just review quickly one more time. We had our sketchbook painting that we did, a small composition on vacation. We want to take this idea and develop it a little further because we really like the uh, light and shade, the beautiful shadows here, the nice Adirondack chair and the tables and the beautiful flowers, colorful red and orange flowers and the greenery. That's really exciting. It really works well. It looks beautiful. We're going to take this idea, develop it further. We're going to go and create now a full painting. So we took this idea, we developed it, made this the right side of the painting pretty much. And then we added on and created just out of creative, you know, wherewithal. We create, we, we just made a nice uh, sea uh, and uh, ocean, uh, you know, an ocean and uh, sandy beach here. And another uh, column here, another uh, post on the deck here, another post and some greenery here. And we just added onto our table to make it a complete painting. And that's my, <clears throat> my original that I actually did when I was working everything out. And now we're gonna have our, we'll take our watercolor paper I'll set my uh, drawing. I'll draw my. I'll set my sketch across from me as well as my sketchbook composition. Both will be across from me, and I'll we'll get a number uh, nine mechanical pencil, and maybe we'll put some tape on our. We'll put some tape on our, uh, this is a, this is a gummed pad. This is Arches uh, satin paper. It's got the uh, pink uh, paper on top of it, on the uh, cover. get our paper here set up with our tape we'll make sure the tape is down good along the edges especially just along the edge where it meets the paper on the inside it's probably better not to it's probably better just to try to make sure this this seam right here is really set really well 
and then the rest of the tape we don't have to worry about too much and it'll be easier to lift off the tape later if we don't take the whole bit of tape and press it down really hard it makes it a little bit easier the only things we just don't water we don't want water seeping in underneath this this seam here along the uh, paper okay so now we're gonna do our drawing this one's pretty simple we made the composition simple for ourselves um, we made it um, we we kind of divided it in half This could be a, a, like a personal painting where, you know, you, you, this might be a vacation you went on and you had something in your sketchbook and you, so you can, you don't have to worry about it being perfect as long as you really enjoy the look of it and it brings back the, those good memories of a vacation or a, a trip you had. That's the real key here. This wouldn't be necessarily like something um, that you would probably, you know, you might put into a gallery show or something. I'm not sure, but um in any case, um, I'll remember to put the light uh, where the light was, is going to be from this side of the scene here. So we'll put our light insignia on our tape. And that should be good. Um, we also might, just for a reference, the uh, table is not quite halfway. So if this is halfway over here, well, this is the center line on the parallel line and then the vertical line of the drawing if this is halfway approximately um, the table is about almost halfway but not quite so let's go a little bit less than half so then we can put another mark here on the tape not on the paper on the tape we keep that and we just maybe we put table there so we have a little mark here for table so we kind of know that's going to be where, where our table is these little hash marks we make, they're really, really important actually because it, it, it kind of, before we start drawing, we can already start planning out where things are gonna go so that when we are starting to draw with our pencil drawing, um, we'll have more of a chance of getting things really accurate um, from the start and then we won't be maybe trying to erase a lot of lines and things like that. So if we can kind of figure out where things are um, a little bit beforehand. So these, these hash marks we like to make, these are, really helpful. So this is going to be the table about there. And then the center line we said was going to be this post. And uh, that's really the two key things here. And then we'll work on this side over here first. So let's start over here. We'll, we'll just go here. We'll start our our fence post here and if I go over my line or need to do a little racing that's okay and we'll go across here with our railing Okay, now the railing has three lines. We'll, we'll take a look here. Our railing has three lines, the large and then two smaller. And again, I look at my... So there's like one here, another line here, and then the full section of the wood railing here. And then this is the shadowing under here. And I'll just take my time and I slide my hand across the paper. Then I will start my spindles over here. And 
and I'm looking at my sketch. There's four there. One. So I'll do this. One, two, three, four. So I sort of, uh, again, they don't have to be perfect. Now I'm looking at this and saying about this section here, we're going to start the chair. So let me start doing the chair. I think the chair one, two, it starts one, two, it starts in here basically. Somewhat here. I'm not sure why I put this line here. And that's one of those things, if you add something in there that you don't think is somehow it, I know what happened here. This is the table. That's the table here. Okay, that's better. Now we're going to keep going here, and this is this is the arm of the chair. So there's a little bit of the arm of the chair here, and then the chair goes up like this. And again, that doesn't have to be perfect. And then the, sometimes there's a little bit of a difficult like my, this angle's a little bit, that's not too bad, and okay, then I'm going to maybe, this might help me too, maybe I'll do a quick little rounded line here to help me with my angles, then when I get up to here, Now, right now, I'm sort of working off the side of my board. It causes me a little bit of an issue. Uh, I ran out of uh, a flat working surface. I will try to see if there's a ruler. So I'll just maybe... That won't work either, really. I find that doesn't look good if we start with regular hand, you know, contour drawing and then we start using a ruler. In the beginning, we can use the ruler for a couple lines, maybe. That that usually works okay. But I wouldn't start using a ruler at this point. I'm just going to continue hand drawing this here. And... All right, that works. That, that seems to be okay. It's... Uh, Finish our spindles here. And I'm going to do those <clears throat> spindles. They're they're square. And we're seeing the side edge of the spindles on this over here. This will be the shadow side, so we can put a little couple lines on there, just so we know when we start painting. Okay, now we're going to continue on over here. We're going to do our table. Continue that over this way, and then 
little fan out and do the table the other way, like that. There's a line on the table, which would be the uh, edging that they make on the table. Or we can just go across like this. And it gets a little wider, like that. As it gets closer to us, it gets wider. And again, we said we were going to use this one, this line here, as our center point. And we can start going across, fanning it out. And that's good. As you can see, it looks good. There's a little variation in here, so it doesn't, um, you know, I wouldn't start measuring these, these boards. I would just get them somewhat close. If you want to, you can hash mark a little bit on your drawing to get them a little bit more accurate if you feel you're Maybe like a little bit, uh, not sure if you're going to get the, I guess we wouldn't want to just have it, if I can explain it this way. Like if we start here with our table, you know, we'd want to, okay, let's say once we get our borders here on our table, like we'd want to avoid sort of doing this and then all of a sudden our boards get to like that. That would look sort of odd, doing like really small boards here on the table and then wider ones over here. But if we get them somewhat close in size, like this, that'll be okay. Like these you can see are wider over here a little bit. So the size isn't perfect, but that's fine because it actually adds a little bit of interest to the, to the painting. It's not so much, you know, real uh, accurate and perfect. And let's continue. We're going to go over on this side and... We're going to make our other post the same height that I can use. This is another, I would have, I would have taken a break right now. Actually, let's take a break. Let's take a break and then we'll come back and we'll actually um, finish up the drawing. Okay, breaks are good. <clears throat> we just had a break and we took some time just to um, uh, relax a little bit and um, <clears throat> When I came back now from a break, I notice um, that this uh, post is, is is undersized compared to the railings and the uh, spindles over here. So no big deal. Um, I don't find a little bit of erasing a problem. And I just, uh, you know, added a little more, <clears throat> you know, added this larger dimension to the um, post. And um, since it is on an angle, I'm just going to put a, a little bit of uh, light on this side of the post. And the rest will be in shadow. And again, I'll put a couple lines there just to know that's going to be shadow side. And then we'll take our ruler. This is something where I would just maybe, I'll just put a little line there just so I, I can get that accurate, the, um, the other post over here. And I'll start this one over here and I'm gonna leave this one right at the edge of the painting. And I'll go down like so and then And then I'll just do some a 
we'll do some loose, uh, this is going to be a loose, fun, free type painting. I'm, I'm just adding a little bit of um, pencil lines to show that I'll have um, some areas of uh, some bushes and trees and plants and things here. And the same thing over here, we're going to Again, I'm going to just add indication lines. These are just to help me to remember we're going to do some nice loose, uh, you know, tree and leaf forms and bushes and we're going to have some flowers in here and things. So we'll, I can definitely add in some flower shapes here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to stick with my original. Um, and I'll also adjust uh, from my original. I'm going to leave this more green in this section here. Whereas the original, I think there was a red flower down here. I'm going to leave this green down here because I'm not so really... The way this part of the chair turned out here, I'd rather not have any exciting colors right next to this cha arm chair here. This, uh, you know, the arm of the chair here. So we'll leave this green. And then I'll maybe do another flower here. There's a flower there, and then maybe some more color here, another flower here, and then some. And again, we'll leave it really, you know, carefree and not a whole lot of worries about how it's going to get done. We're going to just have fun with the brush and the paint. Um, that's what I want to kind of show here is as long as you have the the overall format of things pretty good with your drawing. The rest you can just work with your paint and uh, and your brush and have a good time and the more free and flowing it is it's, it's going to look better versus trying to draw in all the bushes and leaves and flowers and things that that's how that's how I originally did the painting was freely. I just did the table and this here pencil drawing on my sketchbook. I just did the little bit of the table, a little bit of the chair, and a little bit of the um, railing and post, and and the rest I did, you know, just free with the brush and the paint. So if I, if I did it that way in my sketchbook, I'm going to try to recreate that here. Does that make sense? To try to uh, just re recreate what I did in in my sketchbook uh, out there when I was painting, uh, you know, out in on vacation. So let's let's do that. Um, I'm going to erase some pencil lines here so this doesn't have to be all. I'm going to erase a few here and there. And that should be good. And one more thing we will get our, let's get our ocean here. Now here, I'm going to make the ocean horizon line, and I'll do it lightly, and I'll put it across in here. But we're not necessarily we're not necessarily going to see every bit of this line because we're going to be doing all the uh, green, uh, uh, interesting leaf shapes and the bushes back here and the plants. So let's, but let's anyhow have that in there because that can be a that can be really good. It'll if we have it showing just a little bit here and there behind this uh, this uh, railing of the deck here, that'll give the painting a lot more dimensionality versus just covering this whole area in here with greens and, and branches and flowers. If we can have some of that water showing through, that'll go, that's going to be really good. That's going to really help the painting to have that three-dimensional quality. And there's the water here. And the waves and things. Okay. That should be fine. All right, we're going to take another break again. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll start our painting. Okay, we're going to start painting now. We're um, pretty much our sketches. Uh, our, our contour drawing is where we want it. 
not every detail in there, but enough that we can start painting and we feel comfortable that we're, we're going to be getting everything in accurately that we want to. And uh, I can I have a, a water pail with um, fresh water in it. And my brush, I have a round brush. This is a Da Vinci Maestro uh, round brush. It's got a good point on it. And um, this is a number eight, size number eight, travel brush. This is the brush that we can, uh, if we're out in the field, we can just cover it up and, and uh, this way it doesn't get damaged, the hairs, like that. It's got a hole in the top for air so the brush dries out. And it's a great brush to have if you're going to do any sketchbook work outdoors. Okay, and then we're going to start here. Now we're going to, again, we said we're going to start over here on the right side where our sketchbook was, where we, this is what we created in the field with our sketchbook when we were on vacation. So we're going to start over here on this section because we already have all the colors there. We'll, we'll use, start using these same colors, the shadowing, we'll work out that. And then by the time we get that in there, again, we said that it'll be a lot easier to just finish out the rest of the painting once we have the, the colors uh, that we need <clears throat> and the tonal values to, of course, the light and shade. Um, so let's go right in here and have fun. We'll make this top section our green area with our greens. Sap green is up top here. So let's get some paint on there. Let's keep them identifiable so we don't want to just homogenize them all. We'll keep our sap green up here and our olive green here. I'll rinse my brush off and pick up some olive green. It's got to be fresh, moist paint. Maybe we'll put a little cerulean blue also up here. And we'll just start out. And I'll start down here. Just getting some color on the paper. Now maybe a couple shapes of uh, some interesting uh, leaf forms. Okay, and then maybe a little splash there. Let's get some uh, raw sienna, yellow ochre. And we're going to use the yellow ochre and the raw sienna just to give us a little bit of variety of some colors happening. And again, sap green, a little cerulean blue. That there is going to be a, maybe the red flower we were talking about, so let's Olive green. If you go over a border, no big deal. The fence here. Blot that up a little bit with the, it could be a leaf actually. That's um, going over this spindle here, so a leaf can actually come on the inside here and infiltrate the uh, interior of the deck area. So that if there's a couple leaves that go over the, um, or parts of the uh, flowers or anything, that's fine too. That can, that's fine to have it that way. And I'm just kind of working around here, you can see, with my colors and um, as
as we go, we can uh, add in some maybe some cobalt blue too, some darker blue for shadowing and some purple, mineral violet. And that's what's nice about this is adding in some uh, good variety of colors. Like we know we're going to use uh, some of the cooler colors for shadows as we go. So I add them in now to the leaf, you know, the areas where all there's the, you know, the brush and the um, trees and the branches and the bushes and things. And we'll go into some more olive green. Sap green. Let's get, get some good fun. Do some, these are really, that makes you feel good when you just kind of blast in some colors and some green stuff up here and it's no big deal. You know this is a free type painting. It's not so you can just have a fun time with the brush and really have a good time, get some really cool brush strokes in there. This is some leaves and maybe some pine needles in here. We'll get some finer brush work in too as well. And again, we're gonna leave some leave lots of whites in here too. Don't fill this all in. That would be, it's much better to um, leave a lattice work of uh, white paper when we're doing our, our, our greenery here. Now I'm going to go with some darker tonal value, that's sap green. Okay, this might look a little odd at first when you look at this, but we're still working on this area. Um, we're going to go in with some cadmium red, um, some lizard and crimson, and some cadmium orange. For our flowers so we're going to start adding in a few flowers then we'll take a break we don't want to keep going um, let's get some interesting flower colors in here so I'm, I'm referring to my
and I dry off my uh, brush just a little bit. We'll pick up some orange. So I'm referring to my drawing, or to my sketchbook. And we, we change things a little from the sketchbook. I recall that we had a little splashing. Uh, I remember we said we didn't want to put a, like a really high intensity color over here by this uh, chair maybe so much because this... might just look better like the way it is now. And we had another flower up here. And a splash or two. Some orange, cadmium orange. And then maybe a, a small shape over here. With the flowers, I would mix up. I would mix up the size of the flowers um, and their locations too. Kind of make. I would make them sort of haphazard, so I wouldn't put all the flowers in one line, and I wouldn't make them all the same size. I would try to make them a little bit smaller, a little bit larger. Move, I would move them around a little bit. I think that's good. We could always add in another. Let's see here. I'll we'll do some more greens. We got some sap green, cerulean blue. We can add some, maybe some darker French ultramarine blue. Sometimes that looks good too, just to get a dark in there, like a nice darker shadowy color. And then here's, let's take a break. And the, uh, another great reason to take a break right now is we can let this all dry for 10 or 15 minutes. And then when we're working over here, we have a less chance of smudging the paper because I tend to always rest my hand on the paper when I work. So you probably do the same. You probably rest your hand on the paper a lot when you work. So if we let this section dry now, since we have most of it completed, um, when it dries in 10, 15 minutes, then we can go back in. And if we do rest our hand in there, it's going to be less of a problem because the paint will be dry. We could also dry this with a blow dryer too if we wanted to at this point. But we'll take a break. It's good to take breaks and we'll be right back. Okay, breaks are great and we're actually... Um, we uh, let this dry, this section over here with our uh, all our plants and all the, the greenery behind this uh, this railing here on our deck and so we're in good shape there um, I'm thinking right now we can start doing maybe some of the ocean uh, across here the um, horizon line of the ocean so we're gonna go in and get some French ultramarine blue maybe a little bit of uh, sap green and We'll make it really dark. We'll even go and we'll get some burnt sienna there. And I'm just going to go across and <clears throat> I will leave a couple spots, I think, uh, without any paint, maybe for, you know, some light, some lights may be uh, bouncing off the Here I'm really careful. I'm going to do the same thing, leave some spots of uh, white paper along this line. And what I'll also do is make sure I'm careful not to paint over the spindles here. 
So I really take my time here going across. <clears throat> then I'll probably go in and dry off my brush a little. Maybe some cerulean blue. And the same thing, I'm going to leave some white paper and have some fun. I don't have to be perfect about it, but I want to just make it a little lighter, this next uh, bit of paint going on. And again, I'm really careful where I'm painting so that I don't Okay, that looks pretty good. And maybe some Viridian Green. A lighter tonal value, so I will let some water. The water is good. And again, I'm going to leave white paper. More white paper now. Less uh, paint. I'll rinse off my brush. Maybe tap a little bit of water on there. And then again use the damp water just to bring this color down a little more. And that should be good. This will be fine, just a little bit of uh, work this paint out a little bit there. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, that is so, oh, that looks good. Okay, so now um, let's, we're, we're in pretty, you know, we're really, a lot of the painting is this, these darker tonal values with the, um, the greenery and the plants and flowers. Um, a lot of the painting is actually um, very light. Uh, tonal values, white of the paper, like the table and the chair and the fencing. So that really is a good um, thing. We're, after we're, at this point, we're, we're in pretty good shape here. Let's do some shadowing now. So now we're gonna work in some shadows and um, we can use the same colors, the repeating colors we have up here for our shadows. Um, so we'll, we have some of that. Per let's, let's make some color, let's make a shadow color here. So that's going to be purple and some cerulean blue and maybe some, uh, we, some yellow ochre. And even some green. I'll just pick up a little bit of green in there. And we'll we'll put some shadowing in over here. It looks like it'd be it could be a little darker. Cerulean purple, cerulean blue, yellow ochre. That makes a pretty good shadow color. And we'll go right under here. We're following our sketchbook and then we're going to work that I rinse my brush off dry off a little bit of the water and we just back and forth just work out that paint the shadow and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to pick up purple more purple cerulean blue Yellow ochre, so that's going to be our shadow color. A little bit of French ultramarine blue, maybe. And this is our shadow area here. We could add more purple to that. And we can go a little darker under here. On this line right here along the underside of that. Rinse off my brush and then 
even that out a little bit. If you find the shadow might be a little dark, you can just tap a little bit of paint off with your tissue. Some areas you can make the shadow more warmer. And I'm just using a warmer shadow color there. Then maybe a little darker. I'll use the same colors, purple, cerulean blue, yellow ochre. And I'll just add that little touch of darker tonal value right there. That's what I'm seeing in the sketchbook painting and that looks pretty good. I think this could be a little warmer in areas so I'm going to add some of that yellow ochre just a little bit here and there up here again and then I'm going to try to just even that out like that all the way across. Okay, and then And if you find your if you're working a lot and you find you're in more difficult sections when you're painting things like shadows or you you can always take more breaks um, so here I'm going to try to fan out my brush like this and get that whole thing here so that whole width of that post um, that post is probably going to be darker right at this edge here because that's where the light is. And And again, more purple, cerulean blue, yellow ochre. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I find that the table is going to be white paper for the most part. Here we're going to have some greenery, so that's no worries if you go over your lines a little bit. We're going to do the same again, purple, yellow ochre, cerulean blue, and we'll get our shadows over here. And then here I'm just going to I'm not going to get too fancy right now. I'm going to get the first bit of shadow in like this. These are going to be maybe a little darker. So I'll just get that first darker Purple, more purple, cooler shadow in there like that. Maybe I'll go and get some French ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna. 
and then we can just add a little more interesting darker uh, spots of color a little more maybe a couple warm kind of we want to sort of keep this warm and cool and we can go with uh, purple and French ultramarine blue dry a little bit of that off and a couple darker spots here and there just a few spots with some additional darker tonal value Okay, that's that's pretty good there. And we can work in some sap green, olive green, and maybe we'll work in some, again, if you go over a line, no worries. A little bit of tissue and we can blot that up. And then here I'm just going to get uh, in some some uh, cooler greens, and then I can splash on a couple some yellow ochre a couple splashes here and we'll add some more detail to this we'll put some flower or two over here that ought to balance that really nicely we have the red flowers over there and the orange so definitely a, a balance thing we want to balance things over here some sap green I added a little bit of uh, cadmium lemon yellow and if I do that now I'm going to remember to add that cadmium lemon yellow in various places around the painting so that that's not just a the eye will pick that up if there's just one spot where you have one color and you haven't used it anywhere else in the painting it'll definitely um, cause a little bit of disharmony in the painting so we make sure we if we have uh, We'll use all our colors throughout the painting and OK, 
Okay. All right, now's a good time for another break. Um, when I come back from a break, like in 10 minutes, let's say, then I'll, I'll, I'll stop and I'll look at everything and, and kind of maybe come up with my final kind of game plan of what I want to do to finish up the painting. I don't want to keep going and going and going and then find that I've sort of overdone the painting. So right here is the time I'm going to, I'm going to take a break. I'll come back for five or 10 minutes before I start again, just to figure out what my last few um, bits of information I'm going to put into this painting. And then after that, I think it'll be fine. And I think I can see already that I'm just going to put in some sand, some light yellow for sand here, yellow ochre. Uh, I'm going to put in some uh, more finer details of um, some of the um, uh, bushes and trees and things with a, um, with a, a needlepoint brush. And uh, maybe a little bit of shadowing on the table and maybe a little bit of light yellow and some cooler shadows on the table and the um, chair, just a little bit to give it some interesting uh, feel versus just leaving it white paper. All right, we'll be right back. We're just gonna take a five or 10 minute break. All right, and a break is always good and we took a break and now we're gonna come back and we'll just, uh, if we use the same colors in a painting over and over, uh, the, pen, the paint still seems to get a little bit muddy if we keep mixing, so I like to uh, just clean up my palette a little bit, make sure it's uh, the, the muddier colors, we can white, we can clean those up a little bit, get the palette back to a fresh palette with uh, no paint on it. And um, I also, when I take breaks, I get fresh clean water. So here we have more fresh clean water. The water gets muddy as well, and that can uh, affect the, um, the colors. Uh, so now we're going to continue and I think I'm going to do some sky color. I'm going to use cerulean, a little bit of cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of, uh, A little bit of yellow ochre and also maybe some French ultramarine and what I'll do is I'll put that up here and I'll make that uh, that gives us a uh, we can go around the top of that fence post and that looks good. And then I'm just going to dampen the brush and the sky is going to be real simple. A little bit of <clears throat> a little bit of cerulean on a paint on there and then I work it across. If you want to accentuate an area, you could do a little more. But I'll keep it pretty simple, the sky, like that. And then toward the bottom of the sky, I'll add just a little tiny bit of orange. With a some water and a little bit of cadmium orange. Blend that in. It'll dry lighter. And we'll do some yellow ochre for some sand. And I wouldn't, I just let the, I wouldn't go too, I wouldn't go solid and block it all in with um, all one color. A little bit of um, alizarin, alizarin crimson, a couple splashes. A 
little bit of splashing just for some sand feel. And if you see a spot that looks unpleasant, you can tap up a little bit of paint. And I'm going to try to <coughs> I'm going to try to get some more sand here. There we go. Okay, and then Some cadmium lemon yellow. That's a really good warm color. Uh, orange is good too for that warm feel, sunlight. So I just go a little, you know, a little bit of the, the yellow. just to get a little bit of uh, that warm color on the no specific direction, just a little bit of... I'll add some here to the chair. Just a little spot here and there. Just to add a little bit of color and that feeling of uh, sunlight. Maybe a little bit of shadow too. Cerulean blue. Some purple. Could be some uh, shadowing that we can't see that's outside the picture so you can add in shadows if you want in locations where you don't necessarily see what's making creating the shadow and uh, this looks good so we're gonna actually Create a few um, finer details here. We'll do sap green, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of that darker, some purple. So I'm just mixing in a little bit of an interesting mixture of darker cobalt blue. So like a darker green with some interesting. And this is something we don't want to do too much, just a little bit here and there. And I'm just gonna have some fun and these are gonna be loose uh, brush strokes, no real fancy, nothing too much. If we keep this simple with just a few here and there, it's gonna be very effective if we sort of go with too many, then it, it it'll won't look as good. So up here, we're okay. A few. That looks fine. Over here, you can kind of see it's a, it's going to be a really good effect because it's sort of plain over here. It doesn't over here the there's a lot going on with the uh, posts and everything and the uh, spindles. So over here, it's sort of gonna look good with some extra but again just a few here and there not too many
that looks pretty good. And we'll also try to maybe do, we'll do a little bit, we'll maybe try to get this uh, line over here. A little bit of a uh, sap green and olive green. A little bit of that mixture that we use for the uh, fine branches. And maybe we'll just try to straighten out this line a little bit. Um, if we blend that in a little bit. That looks okay. And then over here, on this side over here, I noticed we can use some titanium white. And I usually have titanium white. Here it is. So I'll use just titanium white once in a while to um, Maybe just uh, fix up an area that might have I went over the boundaries with the shadow, let's say. So that might be real obvious. Like here, that looks much better now. And if I do the same over here, just a little bit sometimes really helps a lot. If you go over a boundary, you don't have to get it exact. But if you just straighten up a few areas, it looks really a lot better. And I do the same thing over here. I notice a few things that we could just straighten out the lines a little bit on the uh, spindles that I went over. It's okay if some of the branches went over in some areas. But that's really it. If, if we can just get those few spots where we went over, went over a few of the the areas that we were supposed to leave white paper. If we do that with the white paint, just in a few little dabs of paint, that tends to work really good. So the rest, everything looks fine. I will add a little bit of more shadow here. I added another little bit, of, a little bit of shadow there, and I think we can also add some uh, blue, burnt sienna, purple, and French ultramarine. And maybe we can just add a few shadow lines here and there on this section. I think that'll look a little bit better, a little more interesting, so there's not... Uh, Just a little bit of interesting lines that might, I'd be real careful here not to add a lot, just a little bit. It kind of gives a little bit of detail to the table, so it's not so just, you know, all one white spot of color. If we add a little bit of these shadowy lines in here and then maybe warm up uh, some yellow ochre in there too. Okay, that looks much better with a little bit of that uh, detail to the uh, the boards on the uh, and again I don't want to overdo it um, if you want to add some a few figures in here we can do that 
that might look really good. So we can go in with some cerulean blue. And at this point here, some figures on the beach are going to be very tiny, very small. So we'll we'll make some a couple figures here. And I'm going to make two here. Um, I'll use my uh, needlepoint brush to do the. Um, I'll add in a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna and the uh, red. I'll dry off some of that, and we'll just do. A and a couple figures here, and we could do a shadow, some purple and some French ultramarine blue, maybe, and some purple for a shadow color. The shadow is on the right. Light's coming from this way. So we'll just add in some shadowing here. And we'll do that like that. And if the shadow looks a little bit too harsh or something, you can take your tissue and just blot up a little. And we can add in a um, And we can add in maybe some, a few, a few figures in the water. I usually just do the shoulders and the head in the water. Just a couple indications of some people in the water having a fun time. Okay, I hope we had fun. This is a fun painting. It's really a, a painting where we can have a lot better, um, a better time uh, if we just take breaks along the way. So we notice we took plenty of breaks. You, you work until you start to feel like you need a break and maybe take five, 10 minutes just to relax a little bit. You can come back, look at the painting and then, and then start back up again. And we did it in logical steps. We just went from planning it at first and then sketching it, you know, doing our contour drawing, getting the contour drawing done third, you know, thirdly, we began our painting and we just worked our painting, you know, a section at a time so that we um, were able to um, uh, stay focused uh, on what we're painting. Um, painting for too long of time can cause us to go over sections like painting over the spindles can be a problem. I, I would notice that I, I did go over a little bit in a couple spots here and there. So be careful of that. That's definitely something we watch. And uh, other than that, though, it's really a fun, exciting painting to do. Lots of colors, beautiful sunlight, you know, bright sunlight in the scene, the ocean, the sky, the nice cerulean blue sky. Uh, it's just a great, fun painting to do. I hope you enjoy doing this one, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.